So good morning. My name is Christoph Selmay, and I'm professor of neurology at the Center of Neurology in Lodz, Poland. And on behalf of myself and my colleagues from Steering Committee of Daybreak Study, I'm going to present long-term Ozanimod safety and efficacy data in relapsing multiple sclerosis. These are our disclosures. Ozanimod is a selective S1P receptor type 1 and 5 modulator. And it has been recently approved in the United States for the treatment of adults with relapsing forms of MS and in the European Union for the treatment of adults with relapsing limiting MS. Daybreak is ongoing open label extension trial that enrolled participants from four randomized phase one, two, and three parent trials of Ozanimod. On this slide, you have the overall design of the development program of Ozanimod. And you can see that patients from phase one, two, and three trials <coughs> entered, were offered to enter open level extension, daybreak study. And as of the end of last year, there was uh, close to 2,500 patients in daybreak. Here we are having data on annual relapse site in daybreak. On the live site panel, we have an annual daybreak uh, in the parent trial treatment groups. So regardless of the previous treatment with uh, interferon beta or low dose or high dose of Zanimod or placebo, the annual relapse site in daybreak was very low and even between these individual groups and actually was at the level of 0.1. On the right side, you're having the data of uh, time to first confirm relapse during daybreak. And uh, similarly, this parameter was similar for, uh, between all parent trial treatment groups. Here we're having data on uh, MRI brain lesion counts in, in daybreak. On the left side, we have data on new and enlarging P2 lesions. And uh, you can see that the count of these lesions in <coughs> The parent trial treatment groups was similar and low. And on the right side, also the data for gut enhancing lesions showed very similar pattern. And also the counts of this lesion was low in all investigated groups. And actually it was at the level of 0.2 per year. For most participants in phase three or daybreak did not experience disability progression. And during daybreak, actually, little less than 11% of patients had three month confirmed disability progression, and little less than 9% had six months confirmed disability by the data cutoff. Ozanimod was well tolerated with long term use. For treatment related adverse events were generally similar to parent observations. Rates for serious adverse events were similar when assessed by parent treatment group and there was no serious opportunistic infections. Importantly, only 1.2% of patients exposed to either dose of Zanimod developed malignancies, and it was very much within the expected range for the MS population. The most common treatment-related adverse events were nosopharyngitis, headache, urinary tract infections, and nephopenia. Nephopenia was expected because of the mechanism of action of Ozanimod. And actually, the level of leukopenia was, uh, was even with all parent treatment groups and was at the level of 10%. 25 uh, patients had a confirmed grade 4 leukopenia, but only two participants discontinued for leukopenia. So in summary, in daybreak, Ozanimod was associated with low annual relapse and low new and enlarging T2 and gadolinium enhancing lesion counts. Most participants were relapse-free and did not experience disability progression. Ozanimod was generally well tolerated and no new safety concerns emerged with long-term use. Thank you for your attention.